Ground Southwest 3989, ready to taxi. Southwest 3989, taxi to runway 28 via Tango Uniform Uniform 1. Taxi to runway 28, uh, Tango Uniform Uniform 1, Southwest 3989. Hello everybody, for today's tutorial we're going to talk about taxiing around the airport. So you've got the simulator, you've got an airplane, but how do you get to a runway? I'll show you where to get airport charts, how to read the signs and markings, and then we'll taxi to a runway. The first thing you'll need to do to make any sense of this is to grab an airport chart. AirNav.com is a free source for US charts. From the home page, click Airport, and then type in the airport code of your choosing. Then you'll be taken to the airport page, and from there, scroll down, and the chart will be on your right. And these charts are high-quality PDF files that you can zoom and turn to your liking. The next source you can use for charts is Navigraph.com. From their home page, click Products, then click Features from the navigation menu on the right. And Navigraph offers moving charts that'll track your aircraft as you taxi around the airport, and these can be great for anyone who's a beginner or a pro. Especially good for a beginner because it's showing you where you are and, and you can learn a lot from doing it that way. Another way to get them is just to Google the airport code and chart and then go to images and sometimes you can either find a nice quality JPEG or even a uh, PDF file. So now that you have the chart in hand, you'll notice that the taxiways are marked with letters. Now in order to communicate with ATC, you're going to need to learn the phonetic alphabet. Not only to identify your aircraft, but also in order to understand and repeat the taxi instructions to the controller. Look into the description, I'll link to a good phonetic chart for you to study. Now let's talk about the signs around the airport. You will see many of these signs in different combinations, so it's important to understand what each one of them means. It's always good to cross-check your chart with the signs as you pass to confirm you're going the correct way. The first sign is the taxiway location sign. Anytime you see a letter, in this case alpha, with a black background and a square around it, this is indicating the taxiway that you are currently on. So we're on alpha, and the sign is also telling us that tango is to our right. And here we have another sign letting us know that we're on taxiway echo, and papa is running to the left and right and that's indicated to us by the left and right arrows. This sign is letting us know that we're on PAPA, uniform is to our left and right, and 28 is also to our right. So if we're heading to runway 28, we know that if we go right, that is the correct direction to go. Anytime you see a large X on a taxiway or runway, this is to let you know that these are closed and do not enter. The X might also be paired with a sign like this, and anytime you see these, just stay away from the area you might confuse the X as a place to land a helicopter, but helipads are actually clearly marked with a white or yellow H. Now some signs will clearly spell out where you're going. In this case, it's telling us that the south cargo ramp is ahead. Other signs might tell you where the FBO is, the apron, or if you're entering a military zone. The terminals are usually marked by the terminal or ramp number, followed by the different gates or stall numbers. And then near the terminals, you usually see lanes painted like this, and these are designated for the airport vehicles, and you do not want to taxi on these either. Next, we're going to talk about the runways, because there was a lot to talk about with these. This is a runway holding sign. Now, you would hold at this point before crossing the runway, unless you've already been instructed to cross. The numbers on the sign are telling you that runway 23 is to our left, and runway 5 is to our right. These signs will always be accompanied by this line, this is the runway boundary line and is the spot you will hold short of. Now, do not cross unless instructed to. Crossing this line means you are about to enter a runway. Here we have a sign telling us that we're on Tango 1 and then we have a holding point just before 2-3 left. Other signs could look like this where it's telling us we're on Bravo 1-6 but also approaching 7 left. Now we need to hold at that point until cleared so we don't interfere with the landing aircraft. Another line you need to be aware of is the instrument landing system boundary line. This line will be found well before reaching the runway boundary line and only near runways that allow ILS approaches. An ILS approach is an approach that guides aircraft in during low visibility. Staying behind these lines when instructed to is crucial for the approaching aircraft to remain on the approach. Now ILS boundaries can be indicated in several ways, either with the line on the ground as shown uh, a sign with the same line symbol on it could be listed, 
or you might see a sign that says cat 2 and 3 and uh, also there it might just say ILS as shown here now to take a look at all this from above from right we have the runway holding position sign telling us that runway 4 is to our left and runway 22 is on our right Next, we have the ILS boundary line, well before the runway boundary line. And finally, we have the runway holding sign with the boundary line, telling us that runway 4 is just ahead and about to be entered. Some airports will actually require you to enter the runway and taxi to the end, then turn around and line up for takeoff. Make sure before entering the active runway that all your lights are on as if you are about to take off. This leads me to talk about the markings on the runway and the signs you might see along the sides. First, these large yellow arrows are the blast pad area. You do not taxi or land on these. And sometimes ahead of the blast pad, you will see white arrows in the middle of the runway. This is called the displaced threshold and those can be taxied on and taken off from. This is followed by the runway threshold marking and the runway designation marking. This number is based on the magnetic heading of the runway. Next are the touch zone markings, the solid ones being the aiming point. This is the zone where you want to try to land your aircraft. The next lines you see as you travel down the runway are marking the runway in 500 foot increments. You will also see black signs like that that are telling you in thousands how many feet are left on the runway. In this case, we have 4,000 feet left. You might also see machines like these on both sides of the runways. These are precision approach path indicator lights also known as Pappy Lights. These guide you in on approach. With this style, you want two red and two white. This tells you you are correctly on the glide path. Four red is too low, four white is too high. Three red or three white are letting you know that you are slightly too low or high. You also see familiar taxiway directional signs like these. This one is letting us know that this is an exit for Echo 3. This is another sign you might see sometimes. It stands for land and hold short operations. These are used when runways or taxiways intersect the runway that you are on. You would hold short behind the line and this allows other traffic to land, take off, or cross in front of you on the intersecting runway or taxiway. So now that you have this knowledge, let's follow some taxi instructions to an active runway. Southwest 3989, taxi to runway 28 via Tango Uniform Uniform 1. Taxi to runway 28, uh, Tango Uniform Uniform 1, Southwest 3989. Alright, so we got our instructions. We're at Baltimore International Airport. And this is our starting point right here where the circle is, and this is where we'll be going. Of course, we'll be going over to Tango Uniform to Uniform 1. Pretty simple instructions. And, you know, uh, they can get a lot more complex than this, but this is a good starting point for us. Um, I personally love printed charts. I like to have them printed out and in front of me. I can quickly turn them any way I need to. I can mark them up. Um, you can also put them on your uh, tablet um, or you can just use them on your screen. If you have multiple monitors, it's pretty easy. And uh, in some planes, you can actually load them on the physical tablet inside the aircraft. Uh, but... That's just what I like to do. I like to have the printed ones. And, and like I said, look at it, get familiar with it, and then try to plan out where you think they'll have you go. And, uh, you know, when, the, when they give you the instructions, of course, you want to write them down. Um, they can be quite long at times. There can be a lot of things, uh, different runways to hold short of. and and uh, But like I said, this one's pretty simple. Now, one thing you might be wondering is how do you taxi straight down the yellow line or on, on a runway even? And the best thing that I found is make sure you're off the network, you're not on any uh, VATSIM or any online uh, ATC service, and spawn on the runway. And uh, this will put you directly centered on the runway, and from here, go into the cockpit and see exactly where the line is. And I like to use that, that line uh, in reference with one of the instruments. So usually my primary flight display in this 738 with this uh, seating position is usually my center line marker that I like to aim for. And you can see right here the one we're passing on our left right now is letting us know that Alpha is to the left and Tango is straight ahead and it's also painted on the taxiway here. It's not always painted on the ground, it depends on the airport, but in this case it is um, easily letting us know where, uh, where to taxi to. And it's going to be our next right up here. We're making this left. 
and then right here is uniform and you can scroll always you know zoom in and, and make sure you're on the right uh, taxiway by checking out these signs you can see the sign that's just going to pass in the middle right now letting us know that we're on uniform and now that we're going to pass papa papa is running right in front of us uh, horizontally Another thing to to really look out for is when you're taxiing around the airport too is make sure the next the taxiways that you're passing are correct. You know, if you got um, like pretty soon we're going to have uniform two in front of us, so you want to make sure you're seeing that because if you're you know if you're seeing taxiways in the other direction, then that means you you made a wrong turn and you're going the wrong way. So it's always good to keep track of the taxiways that you're you're passing. Um, you know, while looking at the chart, making sure you're going the right direction. But there's really just not too much to it. It's just something you gotta, you know, learn. And like I said, it helps uh, a lot to have the charts. I used to just, you know, when I was starting out, just I wouldn't look at any charts or anything, and and you just end up getting lost. Just, you know, it it just depending on the complexity of the airport, of course. If you're in Amsterdam or something like that, that is a tough airport to get around without a chart. So now we're passing Uniform Two on our right here. We want to go right past that and go up to Uniform One. All right, so now that we've passed Uniform 2, we are approaching Uniform 1, and that will be the final stop to runway 28. We're going to hold short there. The line you will see, that is the hold short line, and unless you're instructed to cross onto a runway, you never want to do so. So you would hold short, and there's certain cases where you'll taxi around an airport and have to cross a runway to get to the runway you're going to. So you would generally hold short unless you're instructed otherwise. And that's pretty much going to do it for uh, the tutorial here. I hope it helps you guys out a little bit just to get you off on a basic start and get you in the sky flying. So once again, hope this helped. You guys take care. I'll see you next time.